a biddly do do ba do <laughs> dudes what is happening it's trent here and uh today i want to share with you my drawing process for uh, a fancy little painting appropriately named the elder long neck from the angoro crater uh, hearthstone expansion pack yeah i did two two cards uh for this one uh working with my assistant danny kong and uh, I want to take you through the process of exactly what happened with that, what kind of information I get, and how I go about approaching doing a Hearthstone illustration. So let's go, let's jam. So before I begin anything, I have to do a series of thumbnails based on a description. The description for this one turned out very different than how it turned out in the final game. It was originally called the Iggy Pop Megasaur, and he was a minion. Uh, he is a, it says, uh, here's the description it said, uh, show me an angry but frail Megasaur. Uh, this guy is a 5-1, but we'd like to keep him a Brontosaurus type. Uh, notes see Megasaur reference in the lower right corner of page 19 in the style guide. You do not need to show plants on his back if you don't want to. I totally wanted to. Um, so we, this was kind of a, a good one because we got a, uh, a style guide for it and uh, this was really kind of one of the first of the uh, the Hearthstone expansions that we ever get any kind of style guide for and what is what is a style guide it, basically it shows you it's a sequence of um, pages usually that kind of outlines well this this kind of shape language these types of colors and every now and then in this painting you can kind of see me flashing it on and off sometimes I actually color pick directly from the style guide it's really just there as a useful tool to make sure that each different artist draws in a consistent style. Now, I have sort of a bit of my own art style, you know, when you look at my work, but I modify that. I change it a lot when I'm doing Hearthstone cards because they don't want every piece to look like it was done by a different artist. If in an ideal world, they would have one style and the artist is completely removed from it. It's, it's sort of one consistent flavor that doesn't draw too much attention to any one particular card. But for the sake of keeping it all consistent, the best they can do is really kind of put together what is called a style guide. Usually it's a good number of pages, depending on the project. Uh, surprisingly, all throughout most of the games that I've ever worked on, we did not have a style guide or we were developing it as we were making it. This leads to a great deal of confusion and frustration amongst different artists who are still duking out into the late hours of development about what exactly the style of the game is. This is particularly true as you're bringing on new artists onto your project throughout development. So I was extremely grateful to have something like this, some really key images that show me skin tones and like the kind of uh, outfits that characters wear and the uh, just, you know, seeing uh, some of the other artists uh, renditions of some of the characters that would be in this set. So from my thumbnails, they had selected one and uh, I just kind of went in and started. I, I think with this one, I, I did a, uh, a gradient map. I start everything, almost everything in Photoshop with uh, gradient maps. Uh, that gets my, uh, my range of shadow greens into my highlight greens. And uh, every now and then I'll just kind of splash in some extra atmospheric color. You'll notice you got a lot of that bounced blue light kind of dropping into the surface area along the scales of this dude. Total drawing time on this illustration was probably not more than six or seven hours, which is a bit of a record for me for a Hearthstone card. Usually there's a great deal of changes. I think the style guide really just helped out an awful lot. Uh, I want to give props to Danny Kong, uh, who I've been working with for about three years now. Uh, he does a lot of the uh, kind of thumbnails, the initial thumbnails. Uh, since I'm kind of uh, managing, you know, a good number of different artists on a great number of different projects, it helps out a lot uh, for me to work with somebody that can help out with a lot of the iterations of the thumbnails and things of that nature. I get to just focus on going in and doing some final polish pass stuff on the final presentation and just making sure that the whole image really matches the art style of the set. And since I've been working with it for such a long time, I've got it kind of down at this point. You know, it's pretty, pretty much second nature to me. It's not too difficult of a stretch from my own comfort zone in terms of style. Sometimes I do work with various different artists uh, and try out new things. It's kind of interesting to collaborate when you're working on the same painting with different artists because you begin to sort of pick up little tips and techniques and tricks and things that they do in their work and you sort of assimilate those and, and when you're 
for managing a group of different artists, you assimilate into all of them. So working with so many different artists and painting over their work and, and uh, going back and forth with different artists, you sort of become like a, like Bishop from the, the Marvel comics where you can just absorb all these different mutant powers and then use them however you want. It's kind of awesome. It's a great way to grow. And this gives me an opportunity to answer a couple of questions. Hernbix on Twitter asks, do you work with fixed palettes sometimes or do you mix colors? Pick them in the process. My process is always kind of changing. Probably the, the safest answer to that is that it's always different. Uh, but for the most part, sometimes I will color pick from something else. In the case of this image, I had a great style guide. You know, this is an interesting thing for maybe you to try. If you'd like to try different color palettes than what you're used to, find a painting that you really like, that has the colors and the vibe that you really like and color pick directly from that. Um, just use that in your own painting. I do a lot of color blending. I sometimes use the uh, mixer brushes and that kind of gets a very smudgy, smeary kind of a thing. I, I do use uh, different gradient effects and layer effects to get various different highlight colors and shadow colors. And then I paint with them. Oh, here's a great question. MTO Art Official asks, what advice do you have for an artist struggling to find a style? I've been having issues finding one I enjoy. I guess my question would be, why do you feel that you need to have one style? Pretty much as soon as you define a art style or you say, hey, this is kind of my style, you'll see if it's a really popular style or if it's a really cool style and it gets a lot of attention, a lot of people will just copy it. So then it's no longer your style. People will actually accuse you of ripping off somebody else's style. So the best thing that I could recommend is, especially if you're early in your career, adapt, modify, try to adopt little techniques from various different artists. Don't be concerned about sort of locking yourself in to an identity in your art style. Uh, instead, try to adopt techniques and styles that are already popular so that you can be more employable. For instance, uh, if I drew more photorealistic, I would not have opportunities on Hearthstone cards, for instance. Uh, you know, conversely, if you only do stylized cartoony uh, sort of Disney art, you're probably going to have a hard time, you know, getting a job on a more realistic, gritty, urban gangster brawler sort of a game. <laughs> so, you know, it's really more beneficial for you to be diverse and just love the, the thrill of trying different styles and skills and techniques. Always grow, always be adapting. Uh, Stephen Crow asks on Facebook, uh, how do you find balance between style and practicality? Also, who are your influences? I would say in the case of anything Hearthstone related, uh, there's a pretty much set style for that. You know, uh, as a professional, I have to adopt whatever art style that project needs. Uh, so, and that's a pretty straightforward answer for that. For personal taste, uh, I tend to try to go with a lot more of a Kind of, a, I guess some of my earlier influences were Disney and uh, Studio Ghibli type of animation. Some anime, but not until a little bit later. Uh, other than that, mostly it's really just whatever tickles my fancy at that time. Recently, I've been heavily inspired by Yoji Shinkawa and Ketsuya Tirada. Oh, and also Akihiko Yoshida. But you guys have heard me talk about these guys enough. These days with personal work, I really just kind of don't really try to achieve any other person's look, any other artist's style. I just go with what feels right to me. And uh, I'm at that point where it's just comfortable uh, to do it how I want to do it. In fact, I love breaking the rules. I do a lot of things that people say don't ever do. I just do them and I kind of get away with it. I'm sort of lucky that way. But if I were looking for work, I wouldn't probably do that as much. <laughs> That about wraps up the process for the Elder Longneck cart from the Hearthstone Unguru Crater. I don't know how you say Unguru Crater uh, expansion. Uh, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you're super hardcore and you want to pick up all of my techniques, tips, and tricks, I do have a, uh, a Gumroad. And uh, uh, what that is, is it's a place where you can buy box sets of my tutorials and huge like 30 to 40 hour video collections. I mean, it's crazy how much you get. Um, and I just kind of reveal all of my secrets about how I do everything that I do. It also happens to be how I fund this whole operation, the whole YouTube thing. So 
If you like these videos and you'd like to see more of them, of course, it's super helpful if you subscribe. It's uh, also doubly helpful if you comment, and it is immensely and superbly, incredibly valuable if you swing on over to that Gumroad and pick up some of them tutorials. Let me share my almost 20 years of knowledge and experience with you. All right, dudes, that's gonna be it for me on this one. I will catch you all in the next video. Ciao.